We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Close the damn door, man. You're letting all the Wi-Fi out. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Hold On, I'm Almost There, a show about life's little annoyances, personal growth, dad life, and so much more with your hosts, Tom the Blade, and myself, Uncle Frank. So have a seat, do them chores, or twist a wrench while we dive down the rabbit hole. All right, so on today's show, all we've been talking about the last couple of episodes is motivating ourselves, talking about getting things done. Well, what if you're one of those folks that you're stuck in the planning phase? Tom and I are going to talk about that today, how Tom gets up in his routine and he writes out his affirmations. He writes out what he wants out of life to not only hold himself accountable, but to really make a impact in his mind by writing things out. Um, not too long ago, at the very beginning of this year, I had a goal to practice my cursive handwriting. And in doing so, I've, I've learned so, so much about, um, you know, how my brain functions when I'm stressed, when I'm in meetings trying to jot down notes. Um, and so, you know, let's, let's talk about, let's get out of that, that, planning phase and let's get into the doing phase because that's very hard how do we get there let's talk about that because we're going to help somebody out hopefully they listen to this hopefully they can take something away from this and really quickly before we get started um, I want to take this time to reach out to anybody that might be having any kind of uh, you know, depressive feelings or, you know, stuff like that. That's not what we're here. We're not here to make you feel worse. We're here to invite right. you to join our team to to fight these feelings of mediocrity. We're not here. We're not gym bros. We're not, you know, those tech bros that are, you know, you, you have to do this and that to join our club. We're inclusive to everyone. All you have to do, your ticket of entry is wanting to work hard, wanting to get better. So if you know somebody that's going through some problems, reach out to them. Don't let them get to that point. Um, this is the two year anniversary of, you know, Anthony Bourdain's death. And it was very tragic. Uh, maybe he didn't have somebody to reach out to. Who knows what the story was, but the fact is that he helped a lot of people out during, his, you know, with his show, with his writings. You never know who you're going to touch. Um, so our goals here are to reach out, make sure that we are giving a hand out to help you join our team and make sure you're doing anything to build that platform and get a little bit better every day. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better better myself, Frank. You said, you know, we're not a certain type of person or whatever to be a part of this team. You said you don't have to be a gym, bro. I mean, that's obvious, right? We're looking at me oh, and you. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> if I let you be on my team, <laughs> I'm just joking. But uh, on a serious note, you know what? It's ironic that you're talking about this because this type of situation is what brought me here sitting to you, talking to you in the first place. I don't know if you remember, I told you the story of how I ended up deciding to do this. But mm -hmm. at the time, uh, uh, I had several friends going through uh, some really bad problems in their life, going some really rough stretches. And I was dealing with one of my buddies, helping him out. He was finally getting through to the other side, right? He was finally feeling better. I could see it in his face. I could hear it in his voice. And I was in the gym talking to him when he told me, man, I'm really doing good. And I could tell we had gotten through the storm, right? The calm waters had come. He was going to be okay. I walked out of the gym, sat in my car, and no, I'm not lying to you. My phone rang. Another buddy called me with more. And I was feeling all this relief. Like, I don't have to worry about this guy. Well, now another guy is calling me the same thing. And, and I'm like, man, like, 
why do they keep calling me? Like, why do I have to keep dealing? I'm, I'm tired of dealing with this. And finally, after I talked to him and I told him, yeah, sure, man, whatever you need. And, you know, I, I told him I'd be there for him. And, you know, I, I, I realized I was gonna have to commit to this. Right. Um, on the way home, I was kind of telling myself, you know what? Uh, if this is what I'm meant to do, if I'm meant to have people reach out to me or reach out to talk to people, you know what? I guess then that's what I'm going to do. And, you know, I'm going to quit uh, griping that this is like this burden on me and just embrace it. And in, 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 for lack of a better term, I'm telling you, Frank, when I got home is when I got that first message for you to join this, to, to come on as a guest. And it happened wow. just like that. I'm not making it up. I'm not exaggerating. It happened within the span of an hour in one wow. day, you know, that all that came together like that. So, yeah, yeah there's there's it, somebody out there. Reach out to them. I've I've reached out for my friends to get them help because, look, I don't know everything. None, none of us know everything, but we might, we might know somebody who does exactly. know how to help you, right? Exactly. You know somebody who knows somebody. We all have that person. Reach out. Your friends are willing, your family, somebody's willing to help you and listen to you. A lot of times that's all it takes is just someone to sit there and listen, reach out, find that person that will listen, that can uh, empathize with you. And you're not alone. Nobody's alone out there. Listen, you're listening on the Internet right now. You yeah. could be on the other side of the world. You could be in space, right? We're listening to you. We're listening. We're here to help reach out to somebody. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that that whole strength and numbers thing comes to mind when you talk about that, you know, you're not alone. We have so many tools now to interact with each other, how we use them, you know, is, is up to the individual, but I'm trying to use them to better those around me, find those that want to be better. I'm trying myself to be better. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a habit. Yeah. It's a habit that I crave. It's something that I want to do. It's, it's like Tom is saying, you know, it's my purpose. I feel that that's what my purpose is, is to wake up and I, yeah, absolutely. I don't know everything. That's why I'm always consuming books. How do, how can I, how can I improve that 1%? books is is my my train of thought you know hey i'm um i see tom and his his physical fitness hey man let me let me give it a shot see if i can work out i started running started lifting weights um you know it's it very early stages of all that and it, it i kid you not you feel better you begin to look at it as a meditation because you're clearing your mind this time that you're taking out of your day is for you. Be selfish and and do that for yourself. Because we're doing so many things for others a lot of times. Do something for you. You know, right. take the time to take care. Take good care of yourself. And asking for help is not a weakness. That's no. probably one of the hardest things to do. It takes and, strength. Yes, And it takes absolutely. courage. It takes a lot of courage. Asking you to be on the show... I, my, my, um, my saying, you know, is, hey, the answer is always no until you ask. And I, you know, thinking about asking you, reaching out to you on Twitter, you know, I I did have some, you know, some reservations about it, but I was like, you know what? I want this thing to be awesome. I love the way that you're always motivating people. You motivate yourself. If this guy says yes and he's able to join the show, man, imagine all the other people that would start listening and and maybe start to feel a little bit better. Well, and hopefully that is the case. Um, and, you know, and I've told you and I've thanked you a lot of the success I'm starting to have personally. I attribute it to joining the show. I absolutely do. You uh, to me, you were the spark that set everything into motion. Because uh, one of the things, and we're talking about affirmations today. I've said a lot of things on this show of what I wanted to do and what my goals were. I can't back down, right? I've told yeah, the world, right? Real, I've told the absolutely. universe, this is what I want to do. I, so I'm kind of like holding myself, my feet to the fire, mm-hmm. the, that I've got to go on with it and do it and and. Lo and behold, things are are really moving in in a positive direction. I'm thankful for it, and I absolutely do. I 
to you and Shane, I, I tip my hat off to it's because of y'all asking me to join for that one episode. That, <laughs> it, I think and you it, never it, left. It, it, started, <laughs> yeah, it started some momentum like I always talk about. It got that ball rolling. And now, you know, I feel like things are moving in, in a very good direction. I'm very happy, very tired, very busy. But, hey, hey it's, it's a good busy. Going. That's right. That's right. It's so, yeah, that's so awesome. It's it's a good busy. I love the good busies. Um, you know, that's that's one thing that you never want to turn away is a good busy. Right. So let's dive into that. You know, thank you all for listening for that. Reach out to somebody or even you yourself. If you're if you've listened to the show and you're, you know, oh, man, these guys, whatever. No, we're we're trying. That's all we're doing is we're trying. We're putting it out there. If you, you reach out to one of us, you know, we might not be able to to help you all the way through it, but we'll find you somebody and you know, we'll we'll do what we can to help you out. And you if know, you have a friend or you have somebody you suspect needs help, reach out to them. Because yes, sometimes they, right, they are not they don't have enough courage to reach out to you or, or they're not mentally strong enough to reach out to you. Reach out to them. Uh, you don't know what you the you know what you could be doing for that person if you would just reach out for that to that person. Yes, your words could have a, such a great impact to them. Just just right. even saying hello, right? You you just never know. You right. just never know. But um, you know, Tom Wright. You know what you say. You wake up like at four four thirty every day. Not every, not no not every day. It all it always depends on my work schedule, which is wild and crazy. But. No, if I have to, I do. If I have to get up at 3.30, I get up at 3.30. It, it's irrelevant to me, right? I know what has to be done. I know what time I have to be at certain places, and I just do it. I mean, um, I do attribute that to my dad. Uh, I saw him when I was young doing that. He would get to work like an hour early and take a nap just because he wanted to make sure he didn't get caught in traffic or have a flat tire. And, get, and I thought he was crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Dad, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. <laughs> and, but just by seeing that in action – I naturally do it myself. Um, you can catch me like this morning. You know, I got off of work, went straight to the gym to go train some people, but I got there. So I'm there in the H-E-B parking lot taking about a 20 minute nap uh, just because I don't want to make I want to make sure I don't get a flat tire. I don't want to be late. I don't want to let those people down that are going to be waiting for me if I am late. Yes. That's just that's just how it is now. That's just how I've been my whole life. And um I'm glad I am because people that aren't like that really aggravate me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's maybe your dad, you know, helped coin the phrase. If you're 15 minutes early, you're on time. If yeah, you're yeah. on time, you're late. If right. you're late, you're fired. Right. You know, I, I love that. I love that saying. And it's just, man, when I first heard it back in like 2000, 2001, it, it really stuck with me. I was like, man, you know, let me let me always try to be early. I don't like to be late. I don't like it gives me anxiety when I know people are waiting on me. I know. Yeah. Oh man, it's so crazy. So what what is it that you write? I don't know if you if you're <clears throat> willing to share what it is you write or or how many times you're writing it. I write or... it. Okay. Well, let me let's go back to how this all originated. I've always yeah. gotten up. I've always had a morning routine, what I did. Um, so I got uh, quarantined when COVID broke out. I didn't have COVID, but I got quarantined. They sent me to a hotel room and I'm stuck. It was it was a nice place. So when I say it was like a prison cell, it was just because I was locked in there. <laughs> I had to find something to do. I had to figure out a way to to cope with what being stuck in that situation. I couldn't go to the gym. I was doing like these prison workouts, you know, nonstop pushups. But I told myself the one thing I wouldn't do was change my routine. I wouldn't stay in bed, you know, all day and get up whenever I was getting up, you know, it's five o'clock, five o'clock, five. And I had a lot. I refused also to turn the TV on. I wasn't going to turn the TV on until when I would normally turn it on, which would be about 7 or 8 p.m. And then I'd only allow myself like one hour of TV. So you've got to do something. So I was reading a lot of books. Frank, uh, contrary to what you may think about me, I do read a lot myself. Hey. And I was reading a book <laughs> called Tools of the Titans. Oh, by yeah. Harris. Mm -hmm. And he interviewed all these very successful people and what their habits were what helped them to attain their success and keep them going and pushing through plateaus like we've talked about in the past. And one of the things that a lot of them did 
was write down daily affirmations first thing in the morning, what they were going to do. Uh, the number that a lot of them were picking was 15. They would write it down 15 times. First thing in the morning, this is what I'm going to do. So that's, I said, you know what? It's working for them. It, it can't hurt if I start doing it, right? So that's what I started doing. I, I got a spiral note. Here's my spiral notebook that this has only been lasting me like a couple of months, but you know, I write front and back page. I write the same thing. And lately, if, if, if you wanted to know, my affirmations have be, I will become the best podcaster. I will okay. become the best selling author and I will become the best trainer. Those are the things I write that every day, every day, every day. And slowly but surely, things are moving in the positive direction where I'm making head, headway on all of those things. Um, I've talked about in the past how if we speak things into existence, which is another way of saying affirmation. I speak them into existence. I, I say this is going to happen. I put it out there in the universe, and I've talked to you about how the universe will conspire to mm. make those things happen. The way that these things have been happening for me personally lately, there's no other way to explain it. The way I've lucked into things or or things just happen to fall into place. Um, is it just blind coincidence? I don't know. But I'm just telling you, things happen. You start seeing opportunities where you didn't before because you you start to – it's like repetition. You've planted the seed in your brain. You keep putting in there. You keep pounding it, pounding it, pounding it. Pretty soon, you begin to only think like in one way. In everything that you see in life, you begin to see how can I use it towards making these affirmations come true. And I think that's a big part of it. It's not just magic, right? It's, it's not yeah, like you know, exactly. some fairy godmother is sitting there making things come true. You begin to see the opportunities where you didn't see them before. And you've ingrained it so deep into your brain, into your way of thinking, you jump on those opportunities. Where in the past, you might have let them go. Like, no, maybe a better one's coming. No, you jump on it now. Don't let it get by because this might be that that one shot, right? Yeah, that's right. And that's you what I've been know. doing. And uh, so yeah, 15, like times, 15 times. 15 you, times. You, every wait, So do you, do you, you say you have a routine in the morning. Right. Your routine is to wake up and you immediately go to your writing or do you do you do anything else outside of that? OK, first. And that's the most important thing you said. You've got to get up, get mm -hmm. your feet on the floor. You've got to get up. Do not push the snooze button. Right. To me, you snooze, you lose. To me, once you hit that snooze, you've already lost the day. You've given up. You've waved the white flag on the day before you've even gotten out of bed. We have to get out of that habit. These guys with 10 alarms, eight alarms, you know, they, they keep letting them go off. They get one alarm. Some of my favorite speakers and motivational talkers say they don't even use an alarm. Yeah, they just they get just, up. I don't know how they do that. Yeah. That's just incredible <laughs> to me. I, I hope to one day be at that level, but no. <laughs> I do allow the alarm to go off. I get up. I get my two feet on the floor. I'm not telling you it's easy. I'm not going to lie oh, to you no. at 3.30. Yeah. It's not easy. Sometimes I have to literally take my right hand and hit my two legs so that the, my feet will swing over the bed and get on the floor. Because once I get my feet on the floor, I'm ready to go. So I get up. And then the second most important thing you do, we've talked about it before. We talked about it with Shane. You make your bed. Yeah. Right. You make that bed. I, you know, my wife's still asleep. <laughs> you know, I don't make up kick your her side out of the, the bed, bed and tell her, hey, get up. <laughs> no, I make my side of the bed. Uh, if it's like I woke up during the day because I had work the night, you know, then I make the whole bed. But you get up, you make your bed. And then what I like to do is called prime my body, which is simply doing 15, uh, like the simple squats, 15, mm. but something to get your blood flowing. You got to okay. start going. You got to get it going. I do that. And then after that, then I just, uh, I'll usually uh, do the shaving and take a shower and then like I'm fully I'm up. Then I go into my room and I write down my affirmations and I do at least a 10 minute meditation. OK, OK. And I try to do that every day. Uh, some days, you know, I can tell or man, if I close my eyes and meditate, uh, I might you know knock out. <laughs> so I skip that. You know, it's hard at three thirty in the morning oh, to close your yeah. eyes again and meditate. Absolutely. Or you know, if I know I got to get to the gym real quick, I'll hold off on writing my affirmations. And then when I'm at work, I'll just grab a scratch piece of paper and just find it. And fifteen times, right? And scratch piece of paper. I just have to write it. I have to write it at some point. Take like taking that hammer and knocking one more nail down. That's yes. what I do. And that's how so, I go about it. 
the the crazy thing is is uh well, it's not crazy but you talk about uh making sure you wake up or getting out of bed when you wake up not hitting that snooze button right. uh, i was watching a video the other day about um the add brain and how we have programmed ourselves to hit these um heights and and low points of of dopamine so uh they were saying that these little routines like as soon as you wake up just putting one foot taking one foot off of uh, where it's at and putting it on the floor will will lead you to getting that other foot because yes. each one of those is is like a dopamine hit because you planned it the night before you you set a goal you hit that goal and and for some people you know that's a super duper easy goal but for others you know just putting that foot down is is a that's a game changer you know you have that little hit of dopamine that says hey i did something fantastic what else can i do that other foot comes down. Right. Then, like you said, you do all these little, um, you well, know, just to, to put it in the simplest blood. terms we've talked about before. You put that one foot down. What do you immediately your body is natural response to do? Yeah. To put the second one. Exactly. You're building what? What did we talk about? Momentum. Momentum. Just exactly. by sticking that one foot down, your body, that natural response is to get that second foot down. But it's so hard to get that first one down. Just it get it down. It is. Like I but, said, I have to physically setting, knock it off. Yeah, you got to do it. Setting that goal and then knocking that goal. Simple goals, yeah. like you are. You're, you're always saying. We're always saying those simple goals lead to the big goal. Right. It, and and you can't focus on the big goal without having these little targets. That's right. Uh, you know that that's how you move a mountain is one one little piece at a time. Just keep chipping at it. And these little goals that you set for yourself set off you know this this dopamine in your brain that's going to say hey this feels great i want more you begin to crave it right and then those habit those those little um goals that you set become habits right. and then after a while it, you 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 build on that and you're just going to keep going you're just yeah. going to keep going and you can stop every now and then cuz we always say Every setback leads to a great comeback. Right. You yeah. just have to want to come back. And yeah. it happens. You know, we're no one's perfect. No one's out here just shining all the time. Right. You know, no one's grinding all the time. You have to take a break. But don't sit and rest forever. Don't be like me and work out every <laughs> six months, you know. <laughs> but, you, you know, and we talk about how simple it sounds to just get out of bed. Yeah, it sounds yeah. so simple, but it's not easy. But think about it. You can't do anything. You can't accomplish anything until you get out of bed, right? It's, it's literally the most important thing you're going to do all day to affect your day is to get up and get going. If you don't do that, nothing else is going to happen. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of these people that are struggling and with, you know, depression, things like that, I think that's one of the things that really would help out a lot because a lot of times, you know, they just don't want to get out of bed, right? They just want to stay there you got to get up, you got to get up and start moving. And once you get your, you'll start following into your old routine. You'll start going back to those things you used to do just naturally. I believe you will do that just out of your natural reaction of what your body muscle memory, right? It'll okay. start coming back into the play, but you've got to get going. The most simplest thing that we all take for granted, getting up and getting out of bed is one of the most important things. It's very important, absolutely. And I'm not trying to sound like a doctor. I, you know, I'm certainly not any. Oh, well, well you don't brain don't anything, it. <laughs> right? Uh, I was just talking about this, these little hits of dopamine. It's just right. that this is what's going on in your brain. This is why you want to do stuff. It right. feels good. It feels good when you watch TV. That's dopamine. Every time somebody hits that like on your whatever. That's dopamine. You keep going back for that. That crunch from those Cheetos you keep feeding yourself. That's dopamine. That's why you keep going back to it. Uh, we're we're all we're all set to make our stomachs happy. And the reason most of the time we're doing things is to eat food and then eat better food. The better food you eat, the better you feel. We're, that's all we're really after is trying to feed ourselves, feed our families. 
what you're doing day in and day out determines what kind of food you get to feed yourself and your family. So, you know, think think about that. Yeah. You know, I was just talking to, to one of the girls I was training today. I put it through a, a much more difficult routine, a much longer duration. And uh, when she got through, I could tell she was kind of spent physically. You know, I said, how did that feel? Did you feel like you did some work? She said, yeah, it did. You know, I felt, you know, felt it kind of, you know, it was hard. I said, yeah, well, and how you feel? She goes, you know what? It was really hard, but I really liked it. I liked the way it was feeling, you know, and I said, good. Now we're ready to really start making some progress. Now you're enjoying this progress, right? The process Mm -hmm. that we're going to go through. I said, because now once we hit those points where we want to stop, where everything starts to hurt, where it's getting really tough, that's when the true growth is beginning. The easy stuff we've been doing to build up to this point, we weren't really doing it now. Now that we're reaching this point where you're really pushing yourself, you're sweating. You know, I looked at her and I made fun of her because <laughs> she was sweating so much. Now, now this is where the true growth and where you're really going to take off. This is where it begins. Oh, and man, she was that's happy. so And wild. just to see the smile on her face, man, because she got it. She finally got it. You know, why these people are in the gym, why they work so hard, because now she felt that same feeling. And it was awesome. That's crazy. Um, so in in creating your routines we're we're talking about beginning right we're talking about dropping our old bad habits making sure we're introducing new ones that are going to get us to our our checkpoint right the next checkpoint the next the next thing that's going to make us that much more better how did you get started you know outside of the whole covid thing outside of uh you know pushing yourself to wake up early like what else do you think helped you get started in doing some of these things to build that momentum originally before covid or after that Oh, before or now, well, you know, it's always been the same thing. And I've talked about it before. And it's almost like a curse. I'm highly competitive. Right. Ah, and the okay. way I've turned it around on myself is I become competitive with myself. I'm always trying to get better. I'm always trying to be better. I'm always, you know, you talk about reading books. I read books because I, I want to learn just one more kernel of knowledge more mm-hmm. every day. I'm trying to do more. I'm trying to write more. Um, it's always I'm just I just want to get one. I read a uh, heard a motivational speaker say it one time and he i couldn't have said it better and when he said it i totally got what he said I, you get addicted to one more yes. it's just that simple and that's what, what I, I have become yeah i just I just addicted to one more i did 10 reps yesterday today i want to do 11. i ran you know four miles yesterday i want to run 4.1 miles you know it's always one more because that's how you get better um and I, I can't remember a time in my life where I wasn't like that. Maybe I was just born like that. Maybe I was uh, ingrained when I was very young. We had a an, an, an older guy that lived down the street. He, and I was just a little kid. And we would all play football. But he would time us <laughs> running 40-yard dashes. Oh, wow. Because he would measure it out. And he, we, we were all racing each other. Each one of us was trying to beat our time every time. And, you know, I guess from early on, that's how I was – born and that's how i grew up and uh i i don't know any other way it's hard for me to tell you that this significant event happened or that it's just that's the way i don't know any other way (laughs) no yeah and you know you you build routines you know you you're building those habits you have to want to or and and understand what it is you're doing right because Like I said, I, I'm I'm guilty of it. I get stuck in the planning phase. Oh, man, I want to do this. Oh, man, I want to do that. So just like with this podcast, for the longest time I talked about um, uh, what would it be like to have a podcast? What would it what would it sound like? Would anybody listen? Right. And then, you know, I was just like, oh, what kind of microphone? What kind of software? What kind of this? What kind of that? And I just reached out to old Tank, man. And he was just like, man. Do not, you'll get lost in the weeds doing that. Don't do that. Just jump in. Even if you're using the microphone from your uh, your headphones, people are curious. They, yeah. they, they're, they want to be entertained. They want to know what's going on out in the world. And your story, you know, as, as boring as it may sound to you, might change the way someone looks at something or just make them laugh, you know, if nothing else. 
So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I, you know, I, I think I bought like this 30 or $40 microphone off of Amazon and I already had a Apple computer. So I'm just like, all right, let's see what this looks like. And I, you know, kind of started recording myself to see how long I could actually talk to myself. And I found that I could not talk to myself very long. So I, yeah. jumped, I reached out to Shane. I was like, I Shane, totally agree man. that. <laughs> Shane, man, let's see, you know, because he, he was he's a he's an interesting guy. Right. Uh we're always cracking jokes in the office and you know, we got together and we did this and you know, and, and now you're on here and we're doing this and it's just it's changed my routines, you know. Right. You with the Monday motivation stuff, I found that I like to edit uh, the the sound, you know, the editing, what we're what we're putting out and making sure it sounds clean. I'm not removing anything from the show. I'm just making sure that there's no hiss, there's no pop, there's no boom um, to make it sound as close to something that I know is being professionally done because I right. want to be very good at this. Right. Um, and, and it's just, it, it's gone beyond the hobby because now I cannot wait to put it in production and launch it on those Friday mornings. Right. Uh, you know, you're <clears throat> sending me the Monday motivations on Saturdays or Sundays. All right. You know, let me get in here. Let me, you know, let me tweak the template. Let me change the music a little bit. How does right. the, your voice sound? What, is there anything going on in the background? And it, it's fun right it's a lot of fun to me good i'm glad it's uh yeah there's a lot of times i'm worried there is too much in the background but i always know it would come out when i hear it monday it's going to sound clean it's going to sound professional because like i told you that's how i approach it right i want everything to sound like we're giving it our absolute best because we are Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people would probably, like I said, it would probably be funny, like a blooper reel to see me recording those <laughs> motivational Mondays over and over. And then a car comes by and honks his horn and just how irate I get <laughs> or the dog here barks. And I'm just like, oh, man, just stomping around so angry. But uh, no, I, I, uh, I totally agree with you. It's turned into something more than just getting on here and talking. Um, but the, the like uh, last motivational Monday episode we talked about graduating class of yes. 2021, how we can become a part of that class. It's not just the young people or the, these, you know, high schoolers or college guys are, that are taking a new step and going on and moving on in their lives to a, another level. We can do that. Also, we can be a part of the class of 2021 if we decide, but you have to make that decision that we're going to get up. We're going to leave these old things that we've been doing, our old routines that have mired us in, in mediocrity and just unhappiness. Forget mediocrity. You can even be successful. You can be rich and not be happy. How do I become happy? How do I become successful in terms of happiness with the things I'm doing? We've got to change what we're doing. We've got to decide, you know what? I'm walking across that stage. I'm getting that diploma that says I'm done with this level that I've been at and I'm moving on. And we have to change our routines, just like you said. These ordinary things we've been doing, if we want to become extraordinary, we've got to do extra. Extra. It's that yep. simple. The things that we were doing that got us to this place, we got to change. We can't do them anymore. We can't expect to do the same thing we've always been doing and get something different. Life doesn't work that way. You're going to have to make changes. You're going to have to be committed to those changes. Start writing them down. Do these daily affirmations that we're talking about and stick to them. And you've got to make changes. If you want there to be change, you've, you've got to make changes. That's right. Nobody can convince you of it. You really have to want it. And, uh, you know, you're, you're talking about that. One of my one of the things that I wrote down not too long ago. And, you know, you catch me if somebody else said it. But, you know, the make make the move, make the effort, the the only time wasted is time spent being unhappy. That's right. That's absolutely you know, correct. Because there's no point in it. No, no, you know, not the, at all. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad you talked about that because I saw a preacher and I wish I could remember name, his name so I could give, give him credit. He said, you have to understand that wherever you are in life, at some point you made an appointment to be there. Mm -hmm. All the decisions you've been making have led you to this point you are now. You made a long time ago 
with the things you started doing led you to this point that you are in your life right now. But you can make an appointment for somewhere else down the road. But the way you're going to get there is you've got to do things different now. You can't do the same things that got you to this appointment. You've got to start making changes so that that next appointment, you're going to have to take a different route to get to somewhere better. And you can do it. You just have to make the decision. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's all about, though, just just making the first step. The first right. step. First step is always the hardest. <clears throat> but second step, second, third, fourth, fifth step is going to get a little bit easier. Right. Yeah. And it's our mindset. We have to change our mindset. You have to take a more positive mindset. And uh, one of the things that I found as I was kind of getting ready for the show today is I found this poem by this guy named Walter Wintel. And it's it's pretty awesome. And I like to read it. And it's called Thinking. And it's all about mindset. And it says, if you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win, but you think you can't, it is almost a cinch that you won't. If you think you'll lose, you're lost. For out of the world we find, success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win the prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later, the man who wins is the one who thinks he can. And that's all. I mean, yeah. everything we've always said, all the quotes, all the Yoda quotes, you know, everything, whether <laughs> yeah. you think you can or can't, you're right. That's what this poem is saying. And it's absolutely the truth. You've got to start believing you can. And if you believe that long enough and you stick to that, you will. You yes. will. Yeah. And that's uh, you, you talk about that. One of the things that I was I've been reading about, too, in my journey on learning is this thing called the Peter principle. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but essentially you, you grow until your point of incompetence. And that is when you fail. So you continue to, to move up and this is kind of corporate moving up the corporate ladder. You, you keep moving and you keep moving until you have reached a point that you just have no idea what you're doing and you don't really belong there. You've just been driving so hard to get to that next level. And we, we talk about being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Wow. You know, some some folks would look at that Peter principle and say, man, that's pretty harsh. You're reaching a level of incompetence and that's where you're getting fired. But really, you know, you, you sit down and think about it. That Peter principle, if you've reached a level of incompetence and you get let go or you get fired and, and you have to move on, that forces you to now take a look at what you've been doing. Hey, how did I get here? How did I reach this point of incompetence? Should I have been thinking differently? Should I have been doing something else? And hopefully that small setback gets you to thinking and you can jump into something else or even change change careers altogether. Maybe you realize that that you reach that level of incompetence because you're not happy doing that anymore. It just becomes something mundane that you're doing out of muscle memory every day. Something, you know, something something has to break eventually. Right. And and that Peter principle, man, when I first read it and, and, you know, the first time I had heard about it was like a year or two ago. And then I kept thinking about it. I was like, man, you know, that's strange that if you moved up in a company, you will reach a level of just you have no clue. And that's usually when they cut the cord on you and, you know, you have to you have to do something else. But you, you, everybody looks at everything, you know, two different ways. You can look at it as a setback or you can just look at it as a diff, a pivot point that you have to, you know, take what you've learned and apply it to something else. No, I, yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, it, you know, and I always apply it to talk about it with the fire department. It's kind of like the same thing. Uh 
sometimes though too in real life it's not your incompetence it's their incompetence right they don't see the value of what you're bringing to the table sometimes absolutely and that's fine too because then you have to move on and go do something <clears throat> else with somebody that does appreciate and does see it inside of you does mm-hmm. see what you have inside so um yeah i mean all of that all of that falls in together you know you just have to grow from the lessons and and do the best with them that you can yeah, you, yeah. Can. And it's, you can it's mindset at the end of it at it's the end of mindset. it all it's always about the mindset how am i going to approach this event that is in front of me am i gonna you know oh my god i can't believe this is happening and you just kind of throw your arms down and, you know give up or you can say hey you know what this is a yes it sucks yes i'm gonna be pissed off about it but I'm not going to sit here and feel sorry for myself. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to take it for what it is, pivot, shoot, and try to score. Right. Yeah. That's what you have to do. You have to do. Um, You're either a victor or a victim, right? (laughs) We've heard it so many times. I believe that. I live by that token. I I refuse to be a victim. I'm not going to be a victim. I don't care what it's about. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just not, you know, I'm not going to fall prey to somebody else's. Nobody's going to decide for me. You know, they can do things that might affect me, but I'm going to take whatever I have and I'm going to keep going forward. If I've got to yeah. make a detour, I will do that, but I will not be a victim. I will not lay down and, and bend to your will, right? Oh, yeah. You're not going to stop me. And, that, and that's all it is to it. And I bring that to everything I do. Um, I see that my uh, uh, clients and the people that I work with, they start to get that vibe from me when we're working, you know, sometimes you know, things happen at the gym where we can't do what we wanted to do. So we change immediately on the fly, something else. We keep going, we keep progressing, we keep moving forward. Nothing is going to stop us from getting the job done that we came there to do. Right. And that's how I approach everything. That it, I don't see any other way to do it. That if you want to be successful, there's only one way and it's not taking steps backward. It's moving forward. You know, and yeah, that's even all if you got to sidestep it, if you yeah, yeah whatever you have to you do gotta, you got a sidestep just don't try not to move backwards because yes that's, right. Right. that's where you get caught up oh right. man so and so sometimes crazy. all you can do is hold your ground there's going to be days days that are really tough days that are really difficult situations you don't think you can get to where the best you can do is just hold your ground but hold your ground this 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 thing that's fighting against you that's pushing against you this resistance it's you're going to outlast it Believe me, that resistance doesn't like fighting against you either. Hold your ground. Eventually, it will give up, and then you can move forward. And that's the mentality you take. I'm not going to bend. I'm going to keep pushing. And that's 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 the way it is. Got to be hungry for that good food. That's right. I mean, that's all there is to it. Yeah. Absolutely. Man, so thank you so much for sharing your story with us. You know, oh, man. if... Like we said, if you know somebody in need, you know somebody that you you think you need to reach out to them, reach out to them. Right. You know, it don't it only takes a minute to say hello. How are you doing? Um, yeah, that, you know, we can always tell people, you know, look to that light at the end of the tunnel. Reach for that light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes you have to be the light for them, right? Yes. Sometimes you have to be that light. Show them the way. Show them by example. You know, quit talking sometimes you just got to quit talking and tell, show them do right i'm always like words really are meaningless it's all in your actions nobody cares what you say they care what you do and That's one of the true. things uh speaking 100%. again about once i've uh, uh talked about the gym that i'm working at now and doing the personal training i had people literally contact me said because they knew they see when I would make the post at four in the morning that I'm here at the gym doing this or I'm doing that. They said they knew they could believe in what I was saying because I was living it. You have to live it. People you don't know are watching you. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's that person that's struggling. Be the example. Be that light. Be that torch. Don't just point to that light at the end of the tunnel. Be the light. Show them the way. Take their hand and lead them if you have to. But if you care about that person, you will do that. And you you don't know what. uh, turbulent times you're leading them through or what crisis you're helping them to get through just you know make sure you're true to who you are be that light and show them the way absolutely and with that thank you everyone for hanging out with us tonight we're just getting started (laughs) you are getting started 
<laughs> you pulled my string, told me to go. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Well, shoot, I'll take this out. Keep going. No, Man. No. <laughs> it was a pleasure doing this show again, talking with you, Frank. It's always a, a good time. And uh, I'm glad we got to talk about this today. And yeah. uh, just remember, you know, that we are in graduation season. We talked about it on Motivational Monday uh, episode. These people that we're seeing and that we're clapping for, we're so happy. We're wishing them well. Hey, let's wish ourselves well, right? We can also do that. We can walk across that stage, like I said, take that diploma that says, hey, man, I'm done with this. This life I've been leading that's led me to this unhappiness that I wish I was leading a different life. You, there's nobody stopping you from walking across that stage and grabbing your own diploma and saying, I'm done. I'm moving on. Be a part of the class of 2021 and you'll be better for it. That's right. Be the change that you want to be. That's right. You're the only one stopping you. You are the only one stopping you. Yeah. One of my favorite episodes. You're lying. You are the liar that's stopping yeah. you from doing what you want to do in life. Nobody lies to us more than we do. Yeah. Man, that one always rings in my head when I feel like not doing something. I'm just like, no, let me at least get let me try let me do it there's you know <laughs> stop stop saying five more minutes stop right. saying this stop saying that you can get in there uh man it, it just it's it's great to like you said it's great to sit here and have somebody watching somebody do those things and not that i'm trying to be you but leaving my old habits behind Right. We, we all try to do that. It's a struggle for all of us. You know, it's, it's a struggle for me. It's, it's not easy. But, you know, if we want to get better, like we talk about getting one percent better every day, you can't keep doing what you've been doing. If you yeah. want to be different, you've got to be different. You got to be. You got to think differently. Yeah. Right. That's right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us. Yeah. Thanks, Don't everyone forget. for listening. Yeah, don't forget to download the Monday Motivation episode. If you like what you hear, I've got all of our information in the show notes. Drop us a line, send us an email. We're usually checking it every two or three days because we're just getting a ton of emails. It's hard to keep <laughs> up with it. You know, uh, I'm going to start waking up at three o'clock just to check those emails and return whoever's writing to us. Uh, I just recently started an Instagram account, so sure I'll, be, I'll be posting stuff on there. I just had a, a found a neighbor to work out with, so I'm going to start working out. Uh, doing Y'all need back, a trainer. Back and shoulders. You know what? I was actually going to ask you about that. I know what that, I know what that. that just opened up was, place. Do you have virtual, <laughs> virtual training sessions? Because I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't know that he knows what he's doing. I'm just getting in there throwing weights around. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're throwing them around. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the 10, 15 right. pounds. Of Hercules. Yeah, I know somebody that can hook you up. He's yeah, at uh, right. uh, Stupider Airline in Cypress Wood, as a matter there of fact. You go. There it's you go. go. <laughs> I'll hook you up, believe me. That would be awesome. That'd be awesome. Well, thanks again, everybody, and we'll talk to you next week. That's right, everybody. Stay sharp. <laughs>